All right, everyone, welcome to It's 5 O'Clock Somewhere. Uh, I'd like to introduce Christopher Sinclair and Chad Brown coming to us live from B-Side this evening. What is up, guys? Welcome to our second beta test for 5 O'Clock Somewhere cocktail class. Our goal with this is, well, to have a little bit of fun and to employ some out-of-work bartenders, uh, ourselves included, Myself included. Yourself included. And uh, and to explore cocktails and cocktail techniques around the globe and throughout history. Uh, we, yeah. <laughs> we are Fluid Concepts. We are Wild Stallion. Uh, we made that joke last time, too. Yeah. The Bill and Ted's joke, so we probably won't make it again. Sorry. <laughs> um, I, uh, I apologize already for our terrible dad jokes. Uh, but... You knew what this was, so that's really on you. Yeah, really. Should have known better. Yeah. Uh, Fluid Concepts. Fluid Concepts, we started off as as an event and um, activation company, uh, along with a uh, a consulting aspect. And now with uh, COVID, we had to make sure that our company didn't go bankrupt, so we pivoted and we're, we're, we're creating a lot of digital content now, this class being one of them uh, as well. We have uh, wine talks with Tesh that are going on and we have as well the Good Bottle podcast. So I hope if you guys enjoyed this or um, not, maybe check out one of the other ones and see if that's something that interests you. <laughs> um, Chad, welcome. So today we are going to explore the rusty co- uh, nail Cocktail, the rusty <laughs> nail cocktail. <laughs> Not what I almost said there. Uh, so we'll be doing the classic, and we'll do two little variations that Chris and I had come up with. Um, and based on the data we got from our first beta test, you know, we'll go a little slower. We'll go through all the things in the box. Um, but let's start with the classic rusty nail. Well, let's jump into the box. Well, yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? So- most of you should have a fancy box like this, containing all your ingredients. Here, let's just jump it up right up on top. So, let's see if you can see that there. Yeah. So, of course, for the rest of the nail, you're gonna need your uh, your scotch. If you can see that there. Uh, we have. Uh, monkey shoulder, we're using monkey shoulders, uh, blended scotch whiskey, very tasty. Uh, we have our Glen Ronich, Ronich peated uh-huh. scotch. Glendronic. Of course, we got Drambuie, uh, vital in the classic. And then we have a specialty rose tea syrup that I made. Uh, this was uh, a lot of fun, tea based syrup. Uh, uh, rose tea, a little bit of jasmine, uh, your typical white sugar. Uh, this is a two to one ratio. So it was uh, two parts sugar to one part water. So it's a little on the thicker side. Uh, and then we have our cinnamon that we will get to on the second cocktail, which you'll smoke. she will be smoking on this lovely tile. If you're wondering why we sent you a tile in a box. That's why, to keep you safe, and not burn down your house. And of course, we have our little torch to burn said the cinnamon. <clears throat> and then for the third cocktail, we have a combination of dried rosebud and sugar that we will be showing you how to uh, do a nice little fancy garnish on the side of the glass with. Uh, we have our lemon and our orange for the peels. The util- utilizing the uh, oils in those, a couple sticks to light your orange flame, and we'll get to that. Um, you all should have a recipe card that you can follow along with. You see, we start with the classic, then we'll do the smoked, and then we'll do the, uh, the floral variation here. Um, so double check. Those of you who have a box should have all of these items in the box. Um, so we can get rocking. So I guess the first step would be to pull out the, sh- the scotch and the drambuie. Other, 
other tools. Get those ready. Uh, and if you're at home and you're not a bartender and you don't have any tools to use, you know, um, bar tools are vital when you're working behind a bar and pumping out drinks. You don't necessarily need them at home. So you see we have a, a mixing glass here that we'll be using. But really, if you have anything at home, a uh, pint glass, uh, a wine glass even, if you don't have any of those, you could use a uh, coffee mug or, or a hot drink glass. Really, any vessel that you could uh, pour the ingredients in, give it a nice stir, and chill it and dilute it. If you don't have a fancy bar spoon, that's all right. A kitchen knife would work, really. Maybe even a straw or some case, your finger, if it's only you drinking it, that's okay, right? Sure. So we have those options for you. Uh, and this time at home, if you're building drinks, um, you know, take a second, go grab what you need, glassware. Um, if you don't have a jigger at home, if you have any sort of measuring cup with ounces on it, that would be very helpful. Or you can eyeball it, because again, if you're at home making these drinks for yourself, you know, you can go a little strong. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, today we'll be using a pretty, uh, I like the shot glass. Shot glass. Yeah. Shot glass. I'm sure most of you have shot glasses at home. You could use this as measurement. Uh, most of the time, standard one and a half ounce pour in these shot glasses. Or just pour it into your mouth, see how it feels, spit it back out. Use that as your as your measuring tool. And then it's pretty diluted. So. It's pretty diluted. A little warm though, so you might want to add it to ice. It'll be fine. Yeah, I'll go this way now. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so really, um, kind of everyday kitchen products that you might have in your kitchen, as far as glassware and tools and uh, something to measure it out with, uh, something to stir it with. In this case, we are doing a stirred cocktail. Well, really, just would work fine. Um, but you know, if you want to be legit and you have, you want to get some bar tools. There's plenty out there on uh, on various websites or at the Good Bottle, located in downtown Sacramento. <laughs> he has all the tools. All Shady the tools. Bird Beak Jigger. What's that? Yeah, there you go. That's fun. Baby Bird Jigger. I don't know if I like the, the wording of that. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, Something to strain. Uh, typically, bartenders might use a uh, strainer, fine strainer, or maybe even a julep strainer. It's typically used for stir drinks. Um, either one works really, as long as you're blocking the ice when you uh, go to pour the liquid out. You don't want chunks of ice. And if you don't have a strainer or a fancy mixing glass, you could, by all means, build in the glass add the ice, stir it up, and enjoy it right from the glass that you mix it in. So uh, lots of lots of avenues to take to get your own cocktails going on at home. Um, so I think I covered anything. Is there any questions so far about tools or alternative to tools? No? Yes? Maybe? Uh, no questions yet. Any, any questions? questions? Ask them in the chat. Yeah, uh, we have wonderful Jordan to relay the question. So if you type something in, he will let us know because we can hear him and we'll answer him for you to the best of our ability. <laughs> uh, all right, knees and claws for the first cocktail. Uh, for, yeah, for all of them. The rest of the mail. Start with the start with the class. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So again, you got your cool recipe card for those who uh, received boxes. Um, rusty nail, that's what we're going with. So I'm going to start with a fancy missing glass here. And I'm going to get our scotch. Again, uh, <clears throat> typically you want kind of a softer scotch, something that's not too peaty. Um, that being the, the smoke that you get, smoke aroma you get from some scotch whiskeys. Uh, Monkey Shoulder is great. Uh, it's a blended whiskey or a blended scotch. And I think it was pretty much created to 
mixed with. So it's a little more mixed friendly as far as Scotch whiskey goes. So we're going to start with an ounce and a half of this lovely Scotch. Scotchy, Scotch, Scotch, Scotch. Down into my belly. I'm going to pour that in there. And I know you guys are all raving about these awesome bottles we got. They are definitely reusable. Do you have a uh, question from JD? Yes. Are you guys okay with stirring in the rocks glass? What was that? Absolutely. Again, if you don't have a mixing glass or you just want to, uh, you know, skip a step, you can definitely build and mix in the, in the glass you're going to be drinking out of. Um, you know, some pl some bars do that. Some people like to be uh, pol politically correct, I guess, and using the mixing glass and using fresh ice. But again, you know, this, this class is intended for relaxing at home since uh, a lot of us can't go to work or are not going to work. So you can build in your glass and drink straight out of it. That's the beauty of it. So we're going to get <clears throat> our next ingredient, which is the drambuie, which is labeled here for you with no e so we like to be original we're gonna do a half ounce drambuie so drambuie is uh actually a scotch liqueur uh various herbs and uh some heathered leather or heathered honey in there gives it a nice sweet herbal uh flavor so it's a, it's a wonderful modifier and you know i think it's the perfect pairing with something as scotch. Uh, Chris, do you want to hop in any history or anything or get there? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah maybe after, after the first cocktail, we'll go do some history. Yeah. We'll, we'll build the drink up. And then once we're all, you know, taking a minute to enjoy the drink, we can go over some history and stuff like that. So we got our scotch in there, our blended scotch in there. We got our drambuie in there. Next, we just need some ice. Fill at least halfway, whatever your vessel is. If you're doing it in a rocks glass, do it about halfway. That uh, give you some room to stir it so it doesn't go spilling over. And you go ahead and start stirring. Uh, you know, typically from the behind the bar perspective, you stir so you start feeling a little chill on the glass. You can stir for you know 15 to 20 seconds. Um, it's kind of yours to play around with. You just want to incorporate uh, some dilution, giving it water, a little bit of aer aeration, but not much as uh, like shaking cocktail. We're gonna get ice in our OG rocks glass there. I'm gonna use the julep. Everybody following along pretty good? I feel like I'm going fast still, even though I'm trying to go slow. Oh, poor slow. Here we go. <laughs> Boom. Beautiful. Then we're going to garnish this with a uh, lemon twist. Lemon peel, lemon twist. Uh, so I have a Y pillar here. It's actually a vegetable pillar that I'll be using. Just kind of firmly grab on the lemon. Turn the lemon, not the tool, and you get a nice lemon peel there. And if you're at home, you're like, well, fuck, Chad, I don't have a fancy vegetable peeler. That's all right, because if you have a knife, which I'm sure most of you have a knife at home, you can use a knife. Um, I'm going to express that real fast, and then I'll show you that. Using a knife is, you know, you got to be a little more careful with your fingers. But you can just kind of run along the edge of the lemon there and try to get right between the, the skin and the flesh of the lemon. It doesn't have to be too long as long as you kind of get that oil that uh, is expressed out of the lemon there. See how I did that? And then you can use this as well. So when you do that on top and you have a fancy lemon garnish. Um, just kind of funny going back a little bit personal experience on the rusty nail um when i first started a bartender i had that uh that black the black bartender's book that had like 15,000 million recipes in it 
But for some reason, I caught the rest of me. I caught my eye, and I just wanted to push that. And after about a week of my first bar get, uh, gig at the Hard Rock Cafe, no one wanted that shit. It was considered an old man drink. But again, with the, the classics coming back and being so dominant in the bar world right now, uh, you know, we thought it'd be fun to shed a little more light on the delicious Rusty Nail cocktail. Yeah, I, I've always loved the Rusty Nail cocktail. I'm gonna go to this side. Yeah. Just I don't want the I don't want the menu over my face. Uh, Rusty Nail's always been one of my favorites. When's the when the first time you had a Rusty Nail? Did you make it yourself? I did. Uh, um, like I said, I was uh, I was at the Hard Rock. You know, they have their like foo foo menu cocktails on there, and I wanted to learn more, so I was flipping through that and. Uh, I ran into the rusty nail and I never experienced scotch in the first place. So I made it. It didn't really taste good to me at first, to be honest. Uh, but you know, I didn't have an understanding of the ingredients or, or what even fucking Drambuie was. Sure. But, uh, it's funny how it, it always kind of stuck in my mind. And now that the classics came back, you know, early two thousands, there it was again. And it's actually a really beautiful cocktail. And, uh, you know, you get the right scotch <clears throat> blended up well and, I think it's just delicious, you know, it's, it's in the family of old fashioned style cocktail a little bit. And uh, it's kind of funny because I, I've always thought a cherry went in this, um, which doesn't make sense to me now. Well, that book is fun and terrible. At the same time. Um, this drink, first time I had this drink, it was at a dive bar. And it was before I worked at my first pre-prohibition style bar. And um, I, I think I was just really excited to be a bartender still. <laughs> still. Um, I think I might, might have been bartending for like two or three years when I came across it. And it was an old crotchety bartender who I would just go to see and get beers from. Yeah. And shots from, you know, and he was mixing it up for some old guys at the bar. And he's like, hey, have you ever had one of these? And I never had one. And then the second I tasted it, I was like, oh, this is this is something new. This is something different. Uh, at the time, I didn't even really like whiskey that much. I was, yeah. I think at the time I was drinking a lot of tequila. Um, I was like going through that, that arc of my career, you know, where you, yeah find the thing that you like to drink stick with it for a while but even with that like a little bit of honey and a little bit of like that that mm -hmm. lemon zest and then diluted on the ice and i love these these uh gibraltar glasses too at least for like that classic drink yeah it just feels right in this but it's always been a drink that to me was sort of dumbed down you know the original recipe was one to one equal parts uh, one part uh, scotch to one part drambouille, which is just so sweet. Um, especially now for our palates, it's just, it's way too much. But if we look at sort of how we do do things now at like three to one, four to one for this cocktail, as, as we have written down for you, this ends up being somewhat sort of like a Manhattan or a Rob Roy, you know? So it still has, it has your spirit, it has your sweet. Um, the drambouille itself has like a touch of sort of that bitter end to it. Maybe not as much as sweet vermouth. If you wanted to, you could probably uh, make this a true cocktail by adding a dash of like orange bitters into it and you'd be great. Yep. But with all that being said, I I took that idea and, and I developed my own rusty nail. And so I'm really excited to share that with you guys now. Yeah. Before right. we get into that, do I this. do actually have a couple questions in the chat. Oh, awesome. I love questions. So um, from Ben Smith, where did it go? Um, I can't scroll up in the chat to see the old questions. Um, I, be, I guess basically um, he was asking about the history of the cocktail. Um, oh, the also, history of the cocktail. To Tobias so, was um, asking where the rusty nail was. It was. It was originally written into recipe in 1942 at a bar in Hawaii. Uh, it was supposedly created for an artist named Theodore Anderson, 
but it was popularized at, a, at Club 21 in New York City. Uh, and oftentimes it's credited as being created at Club 21, which sort of makes sense because that's the same bar that created the B&B, which is Brandy and Benedictine, which is also a brandy with a brandy-based liqueur. Therefore, it would sort of make sense that they would have made a scotch and scotch-based liqueur cocktail. They did not, but they definitely made it super popular in the 1960s. Um, and that's when, it, that's when it really soared. It was, it was a huge drink. It was on lots of bar menus all around the U.S., but really that New York sort of um, fern bar really, really developed this style of cocktail, like two ingredients, three ingredients, pump it out. You got something, something strong, something sweet, let it go. Um, but Drambu was made in a basement in, in 1908. And I say basement, what I really mean is the <laughs> cellar. You know, like a, like a scotch cellar. But uh, whenever I hear cellar, I think basement. Yeah. It was invented in, in a cellar in 1908. So the likelihood that it was mixed with scotch somewhere around then is probably very likely. So we have about a, a 30-year discrepancy there where, where nothing was really written down. And the first time it really sort of shows up was from a bar in 1942. I don't know what bar it is in Hawaii. So you're going to have to forgive me, but I'm sure we can, we could track it down with uh, a little bit more effort. Fun, uh, fun tale. When I was kind of brushing up on the history of this, the, the when Jambui, uh was first, first came out, I guess they only sold a case uh, in the, in their first like couple months. And then there was some debate on what to, to name this cocktail. Um, so there was a theory that you ordered this because it was stirred with a rusty nail that came from the case of Dream Bowie, which of course, you know, myths and legends of the bar world. Oh, that's funny. But I thought that was kind of funny. I read that, when, you know, when I was kind of brushing up. That's neat. <laughs> Maybe we should create a bar spoon that looks like a rusty nail. Damn. Boom. Anybody know how to create bar spoons? <laughs> I mean, do it. Metal, All right. Metal work. Let's get going with our second drink. Here is my smoked rusty nail. For this drink, you're gonna need your tile, okay? You are going to need the lighter. It's a torch, make sure that it works. I made sure that it worked before I put it in there, so hopefully it still works. We're gonna need our cinnamon. Now, your tile, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's not on something that's flammable, like don't put it on a bed of newspapers, because. That would be funny possible. and also really bad, but don't do it. I didn't tell you to do it. All right. You're going to take your cinnamon, your pulverized cinnamon, and you're going to put make a nice little pile out of it on top of that tile. And we're just going to set it off to the side. Make sure you have your Glendronic. That's your peated scotch. And make sure as well... You have your orange and at least one of your wooden sticks, okay? Now, we're gonna start by putting the ingredients into our mixing glass, but then we're gonna go back. So we're not mixing the whole drink all at once. This is sort of a, a culinary technique, okay? Uh, so first things first, we take our blended whiskeys. Whiskeys, whiskey, whiskey, yeah? We're following along on our recipe card and we're doing one and a half ounces. Now, again, if you don't, if you don't have a jigger like we do, you can use a shot glass and especially if it has a line, if you pour it up to where it has the line on the shot glass, when you're looking in it from your angle to the far side of that glass, it's an old bar trick you look all the way across, that's an ounce and a half. Perfect. Right there. So you take that and dump that in. Right. Um, and that way, when you're looking at it at this side, it looks like it's really full. Then we take our Glendronic. Oh, that's my Drambui. Sorry. We're going to take our Glendronic and we're going to do, we're going to do a half ounce of that. And then our 
our Dram buoy. And we're doing three quarters of an ounce. Dram buoy. Perfect. Okay, now that sits off to the side. We have our tile. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a slice of our orange. Now you want, a, you want an orange round, okay? So you're not gonna slice all the way through it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your orange and just cut the round off. So just underneath where it starts to round off, you're gonna flatten that edge with your knife. Just like that, okay? Now, if you have any, any juice on the inside of that, like pulp, just scrape it out with your knife. This is just gonna make things easier in the long run. Whitney don't in the chat. Don't squeeze the citrus. Just put it off to the side. What'd you say, Jordan? Uh, Whitney in the chat added that you can also use a tablespoon instead of the, like, the shot glass for measuring. Uh, one tablespoon equals a half an ounce. She's so smart. Now, Whitney, she's a, she's a clever one. You can, use a, you can use a tablespoon. Okay. Now, we have our cinnamon and we have our lighter. Let's light our cinnamon. Now, what you're looking for is getting a nice glow on it first. Okay? So, you're going to start and you're just going to, you're going to, you're just going to get it going a little bit here. Because what we want is we want to get that smoke going. And you can see it start to building up. Get a nice glow on that cinnamon so it sort of looks like a campfire. Careful, it's gonna be hot. Don't touch it, you know, because fire. I feel like I have to say these things now, which is really sad, but. <laughs> All right, we take our cup. Put it over and you'll see it start to smoke up. I'm gonna set that off to the side, just like that. I'm gonna take our pre-made drink that did not have ice in it and we're gonna put ice in it. Now, if you don't have a spoon, that's okay. You can just take this and roll it around, that's fine. But with a spoon, what you're looking for is you want to have a nice solid stir. So you're going to take the back of your spoon, place it against the inside of your glass, hold your spoon almost like a pencil in between two fingers, except I'm doing it between my ring and middle finger, not my pointer and middle finger. And it's going to be a push-pull sort of motion around the glass. And I want that, I want that spoon to sound like it's not really making that much noise. Yeah, but we're just gonna get it going and we're gonna dilute this a little bit. You wanna be able to feel the glass start to get nice and chilly. See my glass has developed a little bit of a frost on it. That's how we know we're getting we're getting there. Take our smoked glass. Let's put some ice in it. There we go. Now I find there we go. I find smoking glass to be the safest way to make a cocktail well. Smoking drinks was. I don't know when it was invented, but it was definitely made popular by even Freeman uh, in New York City in 2007 when he launched with his uh, bourbon and Coca-Cola and it was a smoked Coke. Um, and, and doing that, and he was working in a, uh, in a, a molecular mixology bar, if you will. So this method right here is a little bit of molecular uh, work. Oftentimes, Real quick. Real quick, I have a question uh, from Tobias. Uh, any preference on type of ice to use when mixing cocktails? 
I don't think it really matters at home. Um, definitely in a bar when you're looking at consistency, it matters. But um, if you have little cubes, that's probably going to be best. Uh, but honestly, when I make drinks at home, Chad, you're probably the same way. I just use whatever comes out of my freezer. So we're good to go. That also being said, I like to serve things on, on large cubes. We don't have them, and I assumed you didn't have them, so I didn't want to create something that was out of reach, if that makes sense. All right, so we have our drink in our glass. Now for our garnish. We're going to take our stick, and we're going to take our orange wheel, that uh, zest wheel, all right? I am going to place, I am going to leave the zest down, face down, and I'm going to light my stick. Now, the reason we light our stick is, and we don't do matches and we don't do it over a uh, lighter is because you don't want to express any of that, um, any of that gas into your drink. And some people say that they really taste it. Some people say they don't taste it. I'm one of those that say that they do, but more importantly, we don't want to, we don't want to mess with it. Yeah. So we're going to warm up the front of our wheel just a little bit, and we're going to warm up the back of our wheel just a little bit and the front of the wheel again. And now we're going to hold it right over our drink. You see a little flare there. There we go. And that's what we're looking for. This goes right into your drink and we're done. That's a smoked rusty nail. Cheers. Excuse me, sir. Do you have a smoked rusty nail on the menu? Hey, here it is. I drank out of this one though. So, you know, enjoy. <laughs> what do you guys think about that? Is, is smoking things fun? Is it kind of a pain in the ass? Does it add anything? Does it take away? Did you like the original more? Did you like this one more? What do you think? You know, I, I, I really enjoy smoking cocktails. Uh, well, you enjoy smoking too. Yeah, I enjoy smoking cocktails, <laughs> meat, marijuana, whatever. Uh, now I like the aromatics it gives off and uh, especially behind the bar, you know, when you're doing your smoke cocktail, it's gonna draw eyes and it's gonna immediately catch interest to the people sitting at your bar if you're in a bar atmosphere. Uh, and you know, if someone sees it, they're gonna want it. And then the next person sees it, they're gonna want it, which is good for sales. Yeah. Um, and depending yeah. on how your setup is, uh, again, mind the bar, how convenient it is, but um, you know, we're all about guest satisfaction, so. So I do have a few comments and questions. Um, Nikki says this one is so bomb. Um, Tesh says that it definitely adds to the drink. Kind of a pain at home, though. Uh, Nikki likes it better than the, the the first one. It's so fun to light things on fire. And then uh, um, Tesh just took a sip, and he said, I lied. Totally worth it. <laughs> All right. Honestly. Um you know what I like about smoking cinnamon in a bar? Is it covers up the, the smell of farts. That's a good tactic. Definitely a good tactic. Yeah, because because there's always someone who comes in and just lets on rip and expects <laughs> it to like fade away into the ether of the sea of people. Yeah. So a little bit of a little bit of smoked cinnamon just makes everything better. I saw a <laughs> saw a bus today. It's like bartender, the best thing about no one sitting at the bar is that you can uh, totally fart and then walk away and no one will blame you. <laughs> That's great. I have another uh, anyway. question from uh, Benjamin Carter. Uh, what exact flavor profile does smoking a cocktail add? Also, have you ever tried smoking a lime before for a margarita? I think flaming the lime peel. Say, I'm sorry, we couldn't hear you. Say that again. Uh, asking if you've ever tried flaming a lime peel for a drink like a margarita. I have never tried flaming a lime peel. Um... I think that, I mean, it would work visually. Yeah, essentially. I don't know if the flavor would be cool. I, th I feel like, uh, in, you know, I've, I haven't read up on this, but I feel like the orange is probably the most popular, uh, probably because it holds the most oil. Uh, I mean, you definitely get a lemon, uh, oil out of a lemon or a lime, but I think just the, like, the juiciness of it just kind of provides more oil through the, 
the peel. So. I think also the sugar content that's it that's in an orange makes it a little bit more delicious than than a different citrus um, that still has the acid that that's volatile that you that that would work off the skin, but it probably just wouldn't be quite as tasty. That being said, uh, don't take my word for gospel. Play with it. I like one of my favorite things to do always is to is to take things that people would assume would be gross and make them delicious. Yeah, try it so, out. That's, you know, that's the fun side of bartending is like, you know, there's been times where I've heard, oh, that won't work, that won't taste good. But, you know, you don't know for yourself unless you try it. Right. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes you're like, ha, I made this taste good. Check this out. Yeah. So, it's a fun part I- do you have a question from Jamie? Uh, this might be dumb, but what about smoking THC flower under a glass for a drink? Could not hear that. Say that again. Uh, what about smoking THC flower under a glass for a drink? Smoking THC. I mean, like myself. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I think I think I'm of the mind where adding multiple intoxicants into into a single concoction is probably less than wise unless you're sitting at home on your couch and you're not going to offend anybody except for your tv yeah yeah you def- you definitely want to choose what you smoke to you know incorporate with a cocktail and that's kind of like friendly um like we did cinnamon or applewood yeah we've done apple you know wood. you want you want the aroma to be pleasing to the masses versus um, individual, I guess. And, yeah. and I, again, yeah. that's coming from behind the bar. But like Chris said, if you're at home and you want to smoke your cocktail with THC, then. I mean, I free, think like, I, I can foresee a cocktail that is smoked with, uh, with some weed in a glass that's like um, a gin cocktail you know, yeah. or like a chartreuse yeah. cocktail would probably pair, like those flavors I can imagine pairing well. Yeah. I would, I'm such a lightweight though. And I know I have friends out there. I have friends on the last one who definitely can smoke all day, every day. And, and you'd never even know that they had any, and I'm not that person. It reminds me <laughs> of uh, smoking tobacco. When smoking tobacco in the glass, uh, not like a cigarette, but like tobacco was popular for a minute, and then people were like, "Oh no, what are we doing?" That's that's probably <laughs> really bad for you. Like tobacco bitters yeah. was big for a yep. second, and yep. people realized like, yeah, not everybody wants that. So kind of in the same reference. All right, Chadley, let's do yours. Oh, we have a. Uh, I was just going to say real real quick before we jump into the the next cocktail. Um, what about the the scotch itself? Where does it come from? A little bit about that. Monkey shoulder. Monkey shoulder is blended scotch. Yes. The name monkey shoulders is a great name um, because it, it's oh, it refers. Terrible. Refer- Tobias is watching. Okay. Sorry, Toby. <laughs> uh, uh, what it refers to is prolonged use of of the arms and shoulders for rolling barrels through a rick house. So whereas you would end up with like tennis elbow, you'll also end up with what's called monkey shoulder. So the name is is really an homage and paying uh, paying respect to the guys that spend their lives in the rick houses, rolling barrels around, changing floors, palletizing them, throwing them in different places, um, just the way we get to fuck around with it and make good juice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right, Chadley. You're up. Hello, everybody. Uh, so, moving on to the last cocktail. Um, you know, I wanted to make a, a very floral syrup to kind of play off of the drambuie itself uh, and kind of add something to to the scotch and just kind of do something a little different. Um, so let's get into it. The floral rusty nail. Uh, so is everybody ready to move on? Get in our new glass? I'll try to go slow this time. I know you got two cocktails in front of you. Uh, hopefully you invited a friend to, or you can be selfish and drink it yourself, whatever. So of course, 
we're going to have our scotch. Uh, we're going to have our grand bouie. And then we're going to get our rose tea syrup. Um, again, this was a two to one ratio, uh, two parts sugar to one uh, cup of water. And what I essentially did is I, uh, I soaked out the water with a rose tea, a little bit of jasmine tea. Uh, I let that sit um, for a good, you know, 30, 40 minutes to really get it in there. And then I slowly incorporated the sugar until it was all blended up and ready to go. So let's start off with that. Get your mixing glass, um, or actually, you know, I'll build this one out of the glass just to kind of show you guys. Uh, so we have our scotch, uh, drambouille, our rose tea syrup. Um, there should be another bag again for those of you who got a kit. Uh, pretty much it's just dried rosebud and sugar. And we are gonna do a little garnish on the side of the glass there. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So you have a plate at home uh, a napkin or a table. You can just kind of use one of those. I'll give you guys a couple seconds to maybe gather up that. We're just gonna kind of dump that on there. Everyone, uh, just be sure to take some photos of your drinks and post them on, on all of your socials. Be sure to tag us at We Are Fluid Concepts. We'd love to see what you come up with at home. Yeah, good call, Jordan. Oh, I'm also hey, hearing that. Uh, this is why we beta test, so we can get used to saying these things, right? Also <laughs> hearing that folks do not have the blossom water in their box. Blossom water, yes. Um, again, a good reason. This is the beta test. Uh, that is, that's on me. I'll take this. Uh, we were supposed to have blossom water to kind of put on the side. Uh, so that the sugar and rosebud stick, but I'm going to show you another method um, that will work. And you guys all, again, who have a kit, they have the lemon. We're going to utilize that lemon juice and uh, adhere that to make it stick. So I'm going to start with the rose tea syrup. We're just going to do a little... A little bit of this, we're gonna do a quarter ounce. So you wanna uh, keep the balance of the sweetness of the drambouille uh, and the scotch and the syrup. So we don't wanna go too heavy. Again, it's a two to one. So it's gonna be a little sweeter than your one to one ratio. And then we'll get our drambouille next. We're going to do a half ounce of drambouille. Uh, totally, totally sh sh and then to our scotch, blended scotch. Do an ounce and a half. Uh, oh, sorry, two ounces of that. You know, the good thing is dress rehearsal because. Uh, Need some practice, apparently. So my apologies. We're going to build that in the mixing glass because we're going to need this glass to do the garnish. It's okay. Tesh says, we still love you, boo-boo. Oh, uh, thanks, Tesh. You know, real, you're real homie right there. <laughs> so we're going to take our lemon, and we're going to do a lemon wheel. We're going to cut a nice lemon wheel. I'll try to get that in the other camera view there. We're going to use the flesh side to kind of just rub it up and down there, right on the side there. Just a small section. And we're just kind of gently roll that. Maybe not so gently, but forcefully roll that into our sugar. 
and rosebud mixture. Let's see if we can get a little extra flowers on there. Didn't work. Just take your fingers, kind of crush it up. Something like that. Maybe a little cleaner for next time. Really want to get those flowers on there, but it's mainly sugar. So that's fun. Good thing I brought some extra. We're going to try this again. Don't laugh at me, Chris. <laughs> I don't care if I mess up. So again, we're gonna do some lemon there. Uh, dried rosebud, you could, you can get the tea at most supermarkets. Uh, you can try to find a specialty spice shop that might sell this stuff. Very affordable. We're just gonna do this. Right on the side there. It is not working out like the first time I did it. Of course, right? I'm gonna go live. That's why I invite the homies so you guys uh, can criticize us with love. Drambuie is missing an E. Yes. From yes, Tobias. it is. I'm not responsible for that. <laughs> Anyways, Sorry. all right, let's get on to this. So we got our scotch, a little bit of drambuie, a little bit of rose syrup here. Get some ice. We're going to stir this up, dilute it just a little bit. glass here. Go about halfway with ice. Pour it over. And then that lemon wheel you uh, cut earlier, you can go ahead and just stick that on top. Uh, I'm kind of working off the fly here. If you have any remnants left of the rose sugar combination, I know this is not on your recipe card, but I'm annoyed that my uh, side of the glass didn't work. So I'm just going to go on the fly there. Let's go and get some rose petals. Sprinkle on top of that lemon there. See if we can get a good, good view of that on the side camera here. And that's it. That's the, that's the floral rusty nail. Again, uh, made a tea, ba tea based syrup. Bring out some of the floral notes in Drambuie. Kind of complement that with scotch. Get a lot of taste. Oh, delicious. Tesh says the... Pretty, but it sorry, tastes good. Uh, real quick, Tesh says the rose syrup is nice. Very elegant take on the cocktail. What was that? Rose syrup's what? Moist. Oh, thank you. Yeah, feel free to ask questions, guys. Fire away. Again, this is, you know, our, our second beta test. We really want to try to dial it in. Uh, so you guys criticizing us, criticizing us is going to help a lot, believe it or not. So that is the floral rusty nail. Delicious. Try it out. Sip it. If you still have the other cocktails in front of you, kind of do a Side to side comparison, see what kind of variation you you like. Uh, and you know this this is a pretty standard uh, basic cocktail. You know you got your spirit and you got your your modifier, your sweetener, right? So play with syrups, play with ratios, see what you like. Use different citrus oil if you want. That's that's what I love about bartending. If you play around, find out what you like and then you force other people to like it too. 
I do have a question from Tesh. Uh, what inspired you to add the floral note to the drink? Was it? What inspired the floral note? Uh, you know, I got a little bit of hints of that uh, off the Drambuie, uh, which I'm assuming comes from the whatever herbs and spices are in there. Cause, you know, they don't list them all. Uh, and, and, of course, the honey, a lot of natural honey has some floral notes, depending on the region, you know, where you're getting the bee honey from. But I thought I would play with that, and uh, I was happy with it, you know. I'm, I'm uh, doing a lot of tea-based syrups at home, uh, trying to start a company, actually. So a uh, modified syrup company. Keep an eye out for that, <laughs> uh, which, of course, we'll incorporate into these kits eventually. But, uh, yeah, I enjoy floral, herbal notes just in, in general. So I thought I'd compliment that the cocktail, which what she does. This is going to be a bartender throwback, but I, I, I wonder how many of you remember the uh, hashtag herbal notes video no <laughs> i'm old there it is i know that there's at least two people on this thread who know what i'm talking about so it's great uh chad this is delightful thank you uh, i do have a question um slash statement from laura bruce tea bag syrup question mark tea bag syrup tea bag syrup yeah so i mean i don't know what that means if you want to use tea bags to make a syrup, I think that's what they're asking. Um, you can do it real, real easily, you know, depending on how much syrup you're making. I pretty much make a tea with water in a tea bag. Um, I let it sit a little longer than if you're just making a cup of tea to kind of get that flavor in there and really concentrate it in there. Uh, and then uh, I guess you can call it like, was it the cold press method? Yeah. Um, yeah. Room temperature water with the tea in there take the tea bags out, I incorporate, uh, measure out, incorporate the sugar, mix it up. Takes a little longer since the water is room temperature, but you get a lot more uh, uh, viscous uh, mouthfeel and uh, more of a rich flavor really in syrups. I yeah, we might, we might do a syrup class at some point in time um, uh, just to show people how our methodology works. Um, but yeah, room temp water is key because what happens with hot, sugar is that it, it it ends up inverting and what that means is you take your sucrose and your glucose molecules and they break apart so you end up with a with a liquid that tastes sweeter and does not have the um the mouth feel right yeah it thins um, it out a little it, bit and it, it ends up thinner and sweeter so it does sort of two things that you don't really want it to do uh, per, at least in terms of that perception. Um, so that cold method, or at least the cool method, takes a few minutes longer, really, um, but the, the end product is so much better uh, at the end of the day. Yeah. I do have a question from Jackie about last week's stream. Uh, how many yeah. gin fizzes can you make in one batch? It depends on the size of your container, I think. I mean, in a shaker, you can only make two. Yeah. In a I'd say in a classic, in a classic shaker, you know, you can only make two. But I've seen giant shakers where you make more, and if you ever go to New Orleans and yeah. you and you order. Uh, Rainbow Gin Fizzes, they make them in blenders without ice. Uh, really and, how you incorporate the air. Yeah, really. it is. I mean, they just, and all that froth, and it's so easy, and you don't have to shake and wear out your elbows and your arms. Um, and and they that's like five or six per blender. So I guess it, it just depends on what you're shaking with. Yeah. What you shaking with, Jackie? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's a bad joke. Cool. Well. Uh, she said, perfect. After that class, I was asked to make 10. That's awesome. Nice. Um, thank you, everybody, again, 
for yeah. helping us out and uh, joining us. Give her another survey out. Um, yep, I, I've sent uh, Jordan the survey. He will link it into the comment section. Uh, our next class is going to be a purchase box, um, and we are very excited for it. And we we hope that um, if if you're excited about it, you share it with other people. You tell people that we're doing this, and uh, uh, we will we will falter at first, undoubtedly. Um, but we'll we'll make this amazing as we keep going, um, because this is what Chad and I do. We make drinks and we take classics and we turn them into something dope. And this fluid concepts is a great way to really support bartenders and their passion projects. As we, a lot of bartenders aren't going back to work, you know, so or certainly not making the money that they were making um, pre-COVID. So our goal, Chad and I, is to really take industry people and give them give them work uh, doing the things that they're passionate about and telling the stories that they're passionate about. Um, so please uh, check out uh, uh, Tesh's uh, Wine Talks with Tesh um, and, and go on that journey of drinking just undoubtedly delicious wine with him. Uh, if you want to listen to myself and Drew Garrison rant about... Uh, uh, what's happening in the world in uh, in terms of headlines and and uh, uh, for the 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 service industry? Uh, please check out Good Bottle Podcast. Um, but other than that, yeah, please come check out my store, Good Bottle. And uh, thank you again for tuning in, and hope to talk to you guys soon. Remember, uh, take pictures of your drinks. Please uh, take pictures of your drinks and tag us. Yeah, I take pictures that. of those drinks. I do have one last question from Whitney. What's the date of the next class? Yes. What's the what? The date of the next cocktail class. It's two weeks from today. And we are going to be broadcasting from Drew Garrison's uh, home bar. And we're going to be talking about daiquiris. So we're going to talk Daiquiri. about rum and lime juice and sugar. And there's probably going to be a Hemingway daiquiri thrown into the mix. Might as well. Might as well. So we're going to be talking about Cuba and rum and production and all that fun stuff <laughs> all right guys thanks so much for tuning in we'll see you in two weeks with the daiquiri rum box thanks again Bye.